All right, let's turn our attention to uh, one substandard C. And let's look at the language of the standards here. Explain the development of the mid-Atlantic colonies. We're talking about the middle colonies here. And then there's a semicolon again. You know, you have to read these things and try to try to get the gist of what they want you to see, okay? After a semicolon, we see the magic word again, include. You know, these are our standards telling us what do we need to include? What's most important out of everything involved in the development of the mid-Atlantic colonies? In other words, you're going to be tested on this, okay? So we see the Dutch settlement of New Amsterdam. So we need to talk about this Dutch settlement of New Amsterdam. Where is New Amsterdam? Who are the Dutch? Why do they settle there? And then the subsequent English takeover. So obviously the Dutch are not going to own it very long. And then comma and the settlement of Pennsylvania. So let's look at our focus here. Uh, focus here it says explain the settlement of mid-Atlantic colonies. If we made a central question out of this, what what should we learn about the settlement of the middle mid-Atlantic colonies going to help us pass this EOCT or end of course test? All right, and let's look at these elements. It's the Dutch takeover of the English takeover of the Dutch New New Amsterdam, and it's going to change its name to the British going to change the name of New Amsterdam to New York. And then we're going to talk about Pennsylvania. Theme, we're going to see Dutch culture, uh, even today in New Amster in in New York today. And then we're going to see the colonization of that area by by the English as well. And they're going to mix in cultures. And then economics, uh, we're going to look at that mercantilism. We're going to look at uh, this trade, this rivalry between the English and the Dutch, and then conflict and compromise. How do we deal with this conflict, and how how can we make a compromise? And then social and political interactions between the the English and the Dutch. All right, let's look at a map here of the middle colonies or mid-Atlantic. We call them the mid-Atlantic because here's the Atlantic Ocean. Middle of the Atlantic Ocean on the eastern seaboard, Atlantic seaboard of the original 13 colonies, all the way down to Georgia and even Florida, even though Florida wasn't the original part of the 13 colonies. Uh, we see that New York State, it will become New York State, but New York City, uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, all this is part of the, all these are part of the new, new, uh, mid, middle colonies or mid-Atlantic colonies. And we're going to talk about uh, Pennsylvania, why it was settled. But let's look at New Amsterdam here uh, in, in what will later become New York City. Look at the Hudson going up here. The Hudson's very important to understand the importance of New York City and why it becomes one of the largest cities in the United States. And this large harbor here, this right here along the Atlantic, makes it a vital area or place for trade. And we're going to talk about that again, too. All right, so where were the Dutch located? And we see right here, here's Long Island. Uh, this is where New York City is today and where New Amsterdam was. And here's the Hudson River. Uh, the greatest concentration of Dutch colonization was, was here. But it does go down in the New, New Jersey and, and all. But who were the Dutch? That's one thing we need to ask first. Who were the Dutch? Where are the Dutch from? A lot of high school students ask me, where are the Dutch from? So if we go back across to Europe, we notice that right across from England and north of France, bordering it, is a place called the Netherlands. And the capital of the Netherlands is a place called Amsterdam. We don't want to get too much into it, but you know a lot of movies are, for young kids are located there in Amsterdam today. But let's leave that behind and let's look at uh, these. Uh, the Dutch leave uh, the Netherlands and they're, they're very strong rivals with the English when it comes to mercantilistic trade across the ocean, transatlantic trade we're going to talk about later. And they establish over uh, where New York City today is today uh, the seven territories in this huge uh, Dutch colonial province known as New Netherlands. New Netherlands. And there's seven territories. Schenectady, Beverwick, Wiltwick, uh, New Amsterdam was one, Heemstede, Fort Nassau, Swanendal, and a couple of these forts over here. And the capital of this new of these New Netherlands was New Amsterdam here. Uh, right in here. 
and here's a picture of the in lower Manhattan area of uh, New Amsterdam. There's Fort Amsterdam here. All right, so the Dutch are going to settle here around New York and New Jersey and Delaware, and the biggest or greatest capital or settlement was New Amsterdam here. All right, now we need to talk about the takeover of this by the English. That's one of the things we have to do. Uh, first of all, let's talk about why why did the Dutch settle there. The Dutch were very good at trade, very good at locating places that were that were good for business. And if we look, if we look here uh, on the Hudson, this river they knew was very important. But the harbor was extremely important too, because this harbor is going to give them access to the Atlantic Ocean. You know, imports and exports come out of here because of this huge harbor in New York and the access to uh, to the Atlantic Ocean is going to allow them to trade goods back and forth. That's what that's what the Dutch saw. They're shippers, and that's one of the place. The one of the reasons they they located this place, and one of the reasons they wanted to settle here. All right, now let's go back up here. Uh, why? Why did the English want to take it over? King Charles II, we've talked about him already uh, back in 1B when we talked about uh, Massachusetts losing its, losing its uh, corporate charter and then King Charles II changing them against their will invo and, and involuntarily they had to pick up a, a royal charter so he could control them. King Charles II of England was restored to the throne in 1660. In world history, you learned about how James I and Charles II wanted to rule by divine rights, and we don't need to get too deep into that, but Oliver Cromwell kind of breaks things up and runs the Commonwealth of in England, and uh, we'll talk about him in just a second. But Charles II comes on the throne, he's restored in 1660, and he's concerned with the colonies. He's concerned from New Hampshire all the way down to Carolinas, they're broken up a bit, because in between here in what is today New York and these this Dutch colonies, his rivalry has broken up his colonies. He wants to unite those into this great empire, so he can have all those commodities and all those natural resources and raw materials to himself. And so his brother, James, Duke of York, urges him to take over this Dutch Empire here in, in, in uh, the North American continent. So Charles II gives in, but before we do, uh, you know, if we remember back with the Navigation Act, that's why Massachusetts lost its charter. And, uh, and the whole purpose of the Navigation Act was to tighten English control of trade in the American colonies. Notice in the Navigation Acts we went over that in 1651, that's some of Oliver Cromwell's work, where he tried to limit uh, trade, had to be carried out on English vessels, and the ships made in England. Notice that in 1616, 1663, Charles II was on the throne, and he was going to further limit well, no, what type of trade could go in and out of the colonies. Now, who was this directed at? Was it directed at the colonists there? Mm, no. I argue no. This is directed at the Dutch. And the Dutch were were bitter rivals. They were not complementary trade partners. They were competitive with one another in this mercantilistic trade. We're going to talk about mercantilism later on. Now it's a zero sum. If one person was doing well, then you were not. And we'll talk about that competition uh, later on. But Charles II gives in to his brother. Uh, James, the Duke of York, who was engaged in the, in the African slave trade, did not like the Dutch, was competing against the Dutch, and uh, James wants to drive a wedge in these Dutch overseas mercanti mercantilistic economy by taking over New Amsterdam, by taking over the New Netherlands, all the seven provinces, New Amsterdam being the capital of that, and make it English. So Charles II grants James a Duke's Charter over New Netherland. 
and then James dispatches a loyal soldier, Colonel Richard Nichols, and Richard Nichols goes to New Amsterdam to try to take it over. When he gets there, he has a plan to invade. In August 1664, uh, Nichols has three English ships with 700 English men, soldiers, and they go to New Amsterdam and they call some citizens on the, sh on the ships and they offer the citizens the right to keep their property. That's, you know, Nichols tells them, you can stay here. You can keep your property, you can keep your rights, and you can keep limited interaction with the Dutch. But you have to swear an oath to King Charles II because this land, these provinces will be English, not Dutch. And so the citizens there who were Dutch looked at that as a great deal. At least they weren't coming in to kill them all or to run them out of where they had been accustomed to living. So in this picture here, they go to their governor, uh, Peter Stuyvesant, and they beg for him just to give in and submit and turn control over to the English. Now Peter Stuyvesant, this guy here, is not going to give up immediately, right at the beginning. He will eventually but he knows he's limited in what he can do. He's the governor of New Amsterdam. He only had 150 men. He was short on supplies. So he makes a show at first and then tries some diplomacy with uh, Nichols. But eventually he surrenders and signs uh, uh, 23 articles of capitulation and gives up. He goes and gets on a, a ship and he returns back to the Netherlands. And then New Amsterdam is going to be turned over to the English and then James the Duke of York is going to take it over and King Charles II is going to issue him a grant and they're going to change New Amsterdam the city to New York City after James the Duke of York. If we went there today we would see that where the Bronx were where Manhattan was and right here in lower Manhattan the financial district in New York there's a lot of tall buildings in there right here in the upper part of this huge harbor here New York Harbor and uh, if you want to go to Grand Central Station right here in the, in the middle area here, you can go to Grand Central. If you want to see the bull on Wall Street, you'd have to come down here on Wall Street in the Financial District. Uh, down on Staten Island, you'd see the Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island. Uh, then there's uh, Brooklyn and Queens uh, on Long Island here. And let's look here again. Uh, here's where New Amsterdam was, and that's where New York City is today. All right, let's look at let's look at New York City here on Google Maps. Let's go in here first of all. Let's do this. Here's uh, France. You know, here's here's the Netherlands up here. Show this. There's Belgium. There's the Netherlands. There's Amsterdam. You know, and here's London and England. And uh, here's the Atlantic Ocean here, going across here in this tray, triangular tray. We're going to talk about later. But here's New York. Let's let's go a little bit long, closer here. Here's Long Island. Okay, here's New York City. There's the Bronx and Queens. Let's get a little closer. Here's that huge harbor I was telling you about here. Right here in New York. Big area here. Okay. Here's New York where New Amsterdam used to be here. Lower Manhattan. Alright, that is today. New York City used to be New Amsterdam. Okay. We're going to talk about this again. We're going to talk about this when we just talk about geography. But I just wanted to show that to you real quick. Okay. Later on, we're also going to talk about this Hudson River, and we're going to talk about, you know, uh, the mountains that stretch down to North Georgia. And we're going to look at that, uh, all this mountain range here, and see how it limits colonization. English colonization on the eastern seaboard, Atlantic coast. It's gonna, you know, they're gonna only be able to colonize to a certain point. We're gonna talk about uh, how the Hudson River comes up, and there's a little cut across here. And here's Lake Erie of the Great Lakes. We're gonna talk about the Erie Canal and how this uh, geography is going to change New York City into this huge megalopolis, this huge city, and how the New York City is nicknamed Empire State. We're going to talk about how it got that name, why it got that name, but that's a little glimpse into the future. Just want to discuss it here today. All right, so that's the Dutch settlement of New York and uh, the eventual takeover 
by the English. <laughs>